Hey there, ACCA students. Steve Willis here. In this video, I'm going to help you get a pass on your upcoming PM exam. I'm going to demystify the topics around risk and uncertainty. Within 10 minutes, you'll understand expected values, maxi max, maxi min, mini max regret, and the value of perfect information. So buckle up, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. If you want more help with PM, if you want my training courses, my premium videos, check the description below, check the link, it's right here. Okay guys, let's get started. Let's recap the main topics from risk and uncertainty with this really simple example. Let's imagine I am a farmer. I have a decision to make. I can choose to grow crop A or crop B. And I'm concerned about the weather, okay? W for weather. Weather can be bad or weather can be good. So in your upcoming exam, first thing, if you have risk and uncertainty, you always have to isolate first the decision you're trying to make and then the uncertainty. Is it market conditions? Is it the weather? Is it demand? And in the questions, there's no rule about how they set up the table. Okay, so you've got to think on your feet. You've got to be flexible with this. Now, we're going to use profits. If I go with crop A and the weather is bad, I make no profit. This is a very sensitive crop. And if the weather is good, I make $100. Now, let's go with a safer crop. If the weather is bad, this will give me $30. If the weather is good, $60. So that is the first step laying out all of the options in a profit table. So that's the first step, laying out all of the options in a profit table. Now, if they ask you for maxi, max, maximize the maximum profit, well, that's for the risk seeker. They would go with the biggest profit in the table, ignoring the downside of the situation. So they would just pick the biggest profit. If they want maxi min, then we're going to go to the worst case scenario, which is bad weather. Now we're ignoring the upside of risk. We're only looking at the downside. If weather is bad, we want to maximize our profits. Then we would go with 30. Guys, that is maxi min. Maximize the minimum profit. If they want expected values, they have to give you some probabilities. So let's get put some probabilities to it. Let's imagine we have 20% and 80%. So now let's do the expected value, which is really just a weighted average. So we've got two crops, A and B. And there's a 20% chance I get zero, so that's a zero. There's an 80% chance I get 100, so 0 0.8 times 100 is $80. So the expected value for crop A is $80. And for B, there's a 20% chance we'll get $30, so 20% of 30, that would be $6. And then there's an 80% chance we get 60. So that would be 48. And the sum 54. So if we go on expected values, we would go with option A. Okay. If they ask you for mini max regret, that's the tricky one. Here we're looking at the opportunity costs of making the wrong decision. And we're going to make another table that mirrors this profit table. So I set up the same matrix that I have above, and now I'm gonna call this a regret table. 
and it's really a table of opportunity costs. So the minimax regret is for the person who wants to minimize opportunity costs. They want to avoid looking bad from making the wrong decision. So for minimax regret, we're going to look at the options. And we're going to say, if the weather is good, the best thing that I can choose is to do project A or crop A. So if the weather is good and I choose A, I say, wow, I'm lucky. I didn't lose any money. I chose the best option. If I choose B and the weather turns out to be good, I'm going to say, oh man, I missed out on $100. So I missed out on $40, right? That's the opportunity cost, the regret. People around me will go, oh, you're bad at making choices. You could have chosen A. You chose B. Now, if the weather turns out to be bad, well, best decision that I could make would be B. And if I make, if I choose crop B and the weather turns out to be bad, I have no regret, do I? And if I had chosen A when the weather was bad, then people are going to say, ooh, you missed out on $30, the difference between 0 and 30. And once I get the regrets worked out, once I have those regrets worked out, I don't add them up. What I want to do is get the maximum regret. So if I choose option A, the biggest opportunity cost I could have would be 3. If I choose B, that would be 40. And in the, in, the, in the spreadsheet, you could use the max function to make that go really, really fast. So if I want to minimize the maximum regret, I'm going to go with A because the maximum regret is 30. Team, there you have it. Maxi max, maxi min, mini max regret. And let's come back here and let's do the value of perfect information now. You got to know that one too. Let me get rid of this. Let's imagine, well, let's put our expected value table back on the board. Give me a second to redo that. Okay, I've got that set up again. So with this information, my expected value of profits will be $80. I choose option A. Okay, now imagine someone wants to sell me a magical weather report. This weather report will predict the weather with 100% certainty. So now what I need to do is get the expected value of the perfect information. So watch what I do. Let's reproduce the weather here, okay, weather. If the weather is bad, I'm going to choose the best thing. I, if the weather is bad, I'm going to get $30 if I pay for the report. And there's a 20% chance I could get the $30. 20% times 30 is the 6. Okay, now if the weather is good, well, I know that I'm going to earn $100. And there's an 80% chance that that's going to happen. So now that's going to be. So the expected value with perfect information is 86. Now, we said the, the expected value without perfect info, we said was $80, right? Without that report, I'm going to get $80. So the value of the perfect info is simply the difference. It's going to be $6, guys. That is how you calculate the value of the perfect information. In your upcoming PM exam, they're going to make it more complicated, of course. It's probably going to be a 3 by 3 grid. But the mechanics, the approach is exactly the same. Okay, guys, I hope this little video helped you out. Good luck on your upcoming PM exam.